are back at it again here with another video with the invest for tomorrow to the first time yours and investors welcome to the channel to all subscribers welcome back i'll ask for returns for you guys to smash that like button and here we are with the spy the s p 500 index and as we continue to see here it continues to go from the rip area from way up here at 414 transitioning to the dip area then it sat sideways and we're in a dip area again guys continuing this weakness and reaching close to the 52 week lows and we've been talking about key support levels in our previous videos and today our spy bot at 9 40 a.m sent out a bear indicator and the outflows from that moment afterwards cross continued downwards and puts went up 300 percent plus within an hour guys if you guys want to receive this clarity and edge over the charts check out the link down below in the description to the 42 vision indicator getting connected to the spy bot the QQQ bot, our newly released Tesla bot, and we have other bots on the way so that you can receive the clarity and edge that you deserve within the volatility of the markets to maximize on opportunities. And this is my opinion and perspective alone, not financial advice, but volatility is here to stay and to be able to maximize within the volatility, having an edge and clarity within the charts makes all the difference. It does not have to be 42 vision, but if you find value in what we share here, and you want to become part of a growing community of investors using these resources to maximize in either direction within the volatility check out the link down below in the description to the discord and our 42 vision indicators and bots so here we are with the spies i stated in a dip area and it's trying to fight and bring itself back up the question mark here is is it going to break through the lows of june or is it going to bounce from here and double bottom in the bigger picture right actually do one of those big w's here and start to run from here now a lot of people are not expecting that some people state it might go lower i look forward to seeing your thoughts down below do you think we're going to hit new all-time lows for the 52 week lows or we're going to bounce from here and go right back up now we got a lot to talk about and we have an article to look over but before we break it all down i want to share with you guys the home and opportunity i mentioned this morning over at the discord and as you see popping up here on the screen these are some of the home runs I've managed to find this week alone. And while it's not guaranteed to be this way every single time, we strive for opportunities like these every single day. So the home run of the day was spectacular and beyond expectations. And if you guys want to know about these stocks early on in the pre-market and receive this edge and clarity of the charts, check out the link down below in the description to the Discord. And by joining, you'll become part of a growing community of investors all looking to learn and grow together. So these are the two stocks I mentioned this morning. Both of the gave jumps of 5 to 10%, 10 to 20% plus, but one of them turned out to be a home run, and that was TOPS. We were looking for inflows to cross, and this is when we mentioned it in the pre-market in Extreme Weakness on 42 Vision. The inflows began. They hadn't crossed towards the bell, but full strength here giving a 10 to 20% plus jump, pull back down, and then it got a bull indicator, inflows across the midpoint full strength on 42 vision and it gave a highest point of 50 percent plus within minutes guys if you guys want to receive this edge and clarity of the charts and know about these stocks early on in the pre-market check out the link down below in the description to the discord our 42 vision indicator we look forward to having you join us and we strive for opportunities like these every single day so here we are with the SPY, the S&P 500 index, and it continues to pull down lower. As I stated earlier in the video, we're in a dip area. And when you zoom into the volatility here on the 30 minute, it's trying to bounce off of this dip area here that it hit near the 52 week low. I mean, 363, literally a dollar away from the lows that we've seen earlier in June, right? So I'm going to pull up the bull and bear indicators, which you can now gain access to as well. The link is down below in the description to the 42 vision indicator our spy bot our qqq bot and our newly released tesla bot and we have other bots on the way so that you can receive the clarity and edge that you deserve within the volatility of the markets to maximize on opportunities and you can now join the members using these resources to maximize in either direction by receiving this clarity and edge over the charts and in today's video i'm going to pull up the inflow versus outflow indicator which adds that extra layer of confirmation and gives us that edge within the volatility slots are now open for those interested once again the link is down below in the description to the 42 vision indicator and the inflow versus outflow so here we are with the spy based off the four hours under a bull indicator here back on september 9th and it actually went up those inflows picked up 
and it went all the way up to highs here of 415. But since September 13th, it got a bear indicator and it's been in a downward trend. Hit a dip area, tight consolidation, no real strength. The outflows continue to dominate. They switched from green to red, stayed below it, and since then, it's been going lower and lower and pulling away from the midpoint. And here we are retesting these key levels of support, especially the 52-week low of the year. Again, I'm going to ask, comment down below. Do you think we're going to hit a new 52-week low? Or that we could bounce from here and go back up and actually have some strength and that the lows are already priced in at June, guys. I look forward to seeing your thoughts down below. So on the 4-hour, you could see here these outflows are still dominating. They actually kind of slowed down here. It's sitting sideways. But based off the history of the chart, we're at some really critical levels of outflows because back in June, it hit minus 18. Today, we're at minus 22. But a little bit before that, it actually hit lows here of minus 35. So there's still some room here for this to possibly go lower based off the history of the chart and what happened the last time outflow started to dominate, right? So let's go ahead and look at this on the 30 minute as well. Let's go ahead and zoom in within the volatility. And here we are. We were under a bear indicator here since September 21st on the FOMC meeting. A lot of volatility. It was crazy. I mean, it all happened so fast within minutes. We got a bear indicator and then at 2.40 p.m. we got a bull indicator. I mean calls went up 300% plus, puts went up 200% plus, but from that date to the next date, puts were up 500% plus. And since then, outflows have dominated. But a very important thing is going on here towards the end of the day, which is going to be crucial to watch going into Monday. We got a bull indicator and the inflows just crossed the midpoint on the 30 minute within the volatility and if you zoom into the 15 minute you could see that those inflows are above the midpoint let's go ahead and remove some of these circles here so they're not in the way so you could see it there it crossed right above the midpoint and it's kind of sitting sideways i'm going to be watching if this is going to go ahead and pull upwards from these levels or is it going to go right back down and if it does pull up on the 15 minute I'll be watching if this 30 minute can continue to push up higher and if this bull indicator can continue to stay true. Let's go ahead and look at these articles here that are important as well. So the first thing is the S&P 500 index circles a new 2022 low following the latest Fed rate hike decision, right? Is a recession inevitable? So it's super important if you read through this, they talk about different things going on with the rate hike what it's done, what it's doing to the 10-year treasury as it's actually spiking up. But most importantly, as the key word here, is a recession inevitable. Now, if this continues to go lower, what the market is actually trying to do, right, the S&P 500 index and also the QQQs, right, as they're actually going lower in the bigger picture, well, they're trying to price in the new values of higher rates coming in the near future and the possibility of a recession right trying to go ahead and price it in now think about it like the market is very forward looking so when this is all going on they're trying to price in things that they're looking at three months from now six months from now and we are going to hopefully find a bottom eventually but it's super important to realize that the most recent bottom from way back in june is actually being tested and we may see new bottoms or it could find support here recession fears subside and then we get some clarity from the fed and we just bounce from here that would be awesome right but we need to see what's going on here in the charts and something that came out today as well is the fact that goldman sachs cuts its s p 500 forecast and it says that stocks will drop over four percent by the year's end as the fed stays aggressive right they talk about their levels they're actually going ahead and making their end of year target getting slashed from 4,300 to 3,600. And they're stating that we could fall 4% plus from the current levels, right? When you think about that, it sounds like very little, but it's impactful. We could end up below 350 from these levels or even slightly below that into the 340s. And this is important because that means that the lows have not been hit so we need to talk about what's going on here so the first thing is when you zoom out our support level is 362 and if 362 gets broken through based off the history 
the next levels that I'll be watching is down here towards 355 and below that is all the way down here towards 347. Those are the key support levels I'm watching right now based off the history of the chart very, very closely. And I'm also watching on the one day chart as we're hitting a dip area again, right? The last two times on the one day that we've hit dip areas, we either got two white bars that followed each other or four of them back to back. And we got it right here as well. And right now we have two of them back to back. So if it's going to do anything similar to the previous times, it's actually going to have two more back to back. And if it breaks through that whole entire process, we could hit even more, right? It's not guaranteed to move exactly the same, but both times they hit extremities of outflows minus 37 and outflows minus 40. So anything around 35 to 45 area of minus outflows, I'm going to be watching carefully. And right now we're at minus 29. It's not guaranteed to move exactly the same or have to react the same, but we have something to follow and we have something to go off of. And here we are in a dip area from the rip area on the one day. And when you zoom out and we look at this from the one week, this has been in a bear indicator since January. We've covered this all throughout the year. We hit a dip area here and inflows picked up. And this bull indicator, as you see right there, yes, the inflows were up. They were slowing down though. And right after they switched from green to red, outflows have crossed again. And the last time we crossed outflows was way back here in January. And things went down and stayed down below the outflows from that point all the way to this dip area in June 21st, 13 in the lows that were priced in to the market in the lowest point of the 52 week low. So super important to realize that right now, this is what happened in January. And right now it's just beginning if it continues to go even lower. And I've also shown on the spy that this was looking a lot more like 2000 to 2003 than 2007 to 2008 because it got one bear indicator in 07 and it lasted all throughout and the outflows dominated until 09, right? And in 03, right? From, well, 2003, it got a bull indicator and quickly got canceled by a bear indicator and the outflows crossed and dominated again and it lasted all the way throughout that process. And here we are with a short term bull indicator that was in a very weak spot and bear indicator here popping up again very quickly. We're back below the midpoint and when you zoom out to the one month, we are in outflow territory and under a bear indicator as well. I hope this information is helpful. If you guys want to join a community of members using these resources to maximize in either direction within the volatility, check out the link down below. We look forward to having you join us. And as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money.